Look, one year ago I created this video right here, which was Nextshares 13 versus Remix.1, what should you use? And you know what, when I created this video, I wasn't really proficient in the Nextshares app router, I wasn't that sure about some things, and I was more of a Remix user. Today I have used Nextshares and the app router extensively, and I also use the Remix uh, router and also the Remix framework itself very, very extensively with a lot of use cases. And you know, my whole perspective on Nextshares versus Remix has actually changed a lot. But you know what, before I actually tell you what you should use, let's actually first get started with what is easier to learn. So let me be quite honest with you. Learning the framework Nextshares or Remix is actually not that simple. But learning Nextshares is way easier than learning Remix. You have to be honest with that. The list of resources with Nextshares is way more. You have blog articles, you have videos, you have workshops, you have some podcasts. You have so much resources to learn Nextshares and even the docs are actually quite nice. With Remix, I will be again quite honest with you, the docs have gotten worse. They were quite nice at the start. Now they are a bit of, let's say they aren't as nice as they were at the start. You don't have that many blog articles. You have a few prominent uh, article, I guess, authors like Sergio or Jacob Paris. They do create nice blog articles for the Remix community, but still the amount of content is just not comparable to Nextshares. Also, in terms of YouTube videos, it really isn't that comparable. With Nextshares, you have thousands, maybe also ten thousands of videos. With Remix, let's be honest, maybe hundred videos in total about Remix, the framework. It really isn't that simple, it isn't that easy. So when learning Remix, and if you come from a fresh background, so you just learned React or the basics of React, in my opinion, it will be a bit harder to actually pick up Remix because, let's be honest, the resources are just not there. Nevertheless, this does not mean that Remix is worse or Nextshares is better. I just want to tell you that learning Nextshares, at least in my opinion, will be way easier than learning Remix just because of the amount of resources on the internet. And let's not even start with courses. You have way more courses which focus on Nextshares than courses than focus on Remix. Since we have now talked about the actual ease of learning of the actual framework, let's talk about the dev experience when actually working with the framework and also the general ecosystem which lives with the framework. Let's start with Nextshares. In my opinion, the dev experience was quite nice in Nextshares 12 when we had the Pages router. When we then had Nextshares 13 and the App Router, when that got released, the dev experience tanked to the bottom. It was so trash you can't even imagine. One hour, second hour, third hour, fourth hour, and you couldn't really understand why the hours would happen. With Nextshares 14, it has actually changed. You now get actually good hours. You now actually also understand the framework better. The docs got way better, and just in general, the dev experience got way nicer. Also, one minus point which I have to give to Nextshares is the dev server. Let's be honest, it isn't great. It was very bad, it has gotten better, but it isn't great. It really isn't. Now, I know they are trying to fix that with Turbo, and yeah, it's okay, but I used it in my project, and still it isn't that nice. And if you now compare the dev experience, or I guess the dev server, in other words, to now Remix, it isn't comparable. Remix uses Vite, and Vite is very fast and very cool. And recently I just spun up two projects, one with Nextshares, one with Remix, two identical projects with a bit of loading, with a bit of uh, mutations, so with server actions and then with Remix actions. And just in general, the dev experience and the fastness of the HMR, of the refresh, was not comparable. <laughs> it is how it is, it really isn't. Remix is so much faster than Nextshares, and yeah, it is what it is. Now, one thing we also have to talk about is, of course, the ecosystem. It's very important when you make a decision between framework A and framework B, and I will be again quite honest, Nextshares takes the lead right here. The ecosystem which lives around Nextshares is huge. And of course, you have to also say that because Nextshares already lives or exists for many years. I don't even know when they actually got uh, created. I will pop up a number right here. And Remix is still quite fresh. So the, uh, the whole ecosystem which actually lives around Nextshares is so much bigger. One point which I haven't talked about right now is deployment. Deployment is very, very important. You have to have a good hosting provider to have fast websites, accessible websites, because at the end you want to get the best experience to your users. 
And you know, with Next.js, Vercel and Next.js, they are like made for each other. And of course, I mean, Vercel created Next.js. But the downside of that is that they are so tightly coupled with each other that it's actually quite hard to deploy Next.js to a different serverless provider. So if you try to deploy Next.js to, I don't know, fly.io or render or any server full deployment, it's quite easy. You have to create a Docker file and I mean, you will get the hang of it. But deploying Next.js to a serverless environment to anything different than Vercel, so I guess uh, you have Cloudflare and whatever there is on the world, it isn't that easy. It really isn't. You don't have the same benefits as Vercel. And with Vercel, you pay a big premium to use the, I guess, pros that Vercel offers. But Remix, on the other hand, is very open. What I mean with that is Remix at the end of the day just lives off web APIs. And that means you can deploy to anywhere. I mean, I don't know where you couldn't deploy it to. Vercel works, Netlify works, Cloudflare Pages works, Render works, Fly.io works. Everything works without any problems, no weird configuration. You just deploy it, create a Docker file if you need it, and you're done. That's all. So in terms of deployment, Remix takes the lead right here. It is 10 times easier to deploy to a different provider than Vercel with Remix than with Next.js itself. And now the last thing I want to talk about is what is actually nicer to use? Is Remix nicer to use or is Next.js nicer to use just in general, like the structure of the whole framework? And you know, it isn't that easy to answer because even though they try to achieve the same thing, so to create nice websites, performant websites, they are still kind of different when you try to create in websites. Uh, for example, the router, the most basic thing, is completely different in Next.js in Remix. With Remix, for example, you have flat routes. That means you don't create any folder structure, but you just create, I don't know, index.abc.tsx. This is your route. So you don't use any folders, but just points, and uh, I guess you just create one file, no folders. With Next.js, it's a bit different. You create a folder, so in parent folder, I don't know, your route will be ABC, and then in the folder, you create a file, which is page.tsx, and with that, you create a new route. So the whole look looks a bit different, and the whole feel is also a bit different. But in general, just when I compare them both, I can't really say that one is better or one is worse. They both have a bit of different workflows, but I wouldn't say that one is better than the other in terms of just using it. All right, since we have now talked about all the points regarding Remix, Next.js, what they offer, what they don't offer, what is better in some points and worse in other points, let's now actually talk about what I would prefer when creating a project. So let's come to the actual summary of this video. So to actually explain it to you, let's actually take two examples. One example will be just to create a standard content-driven website. For that, let's take my website as an example, janmarshall.com. This website is pretty basic. We have an index page, we have a courses page where you just fetch all the courses from Sanity. Then you have, of course, your authentication. So nothing groundbreaking, but also a bit of actually layouts and also a bit of caching authentication. So you still build something. And you know what? In that case, I would actually use Next.js and not Remix. Well, in this example, we rely heavily on, first of all, the ecosystem system for authentication, so next off, we rely on caching, which is baked in, in Next.js and the app router. Also in this example, for example, the dev server does not play a huge role because again, the website isn't that huge. And also Next.js has very basic data loading and also mutations. You have your just normal async function where you fetch your data. You have then a server component, you have server actions to mutate data. So it's all quite simple, easy to do in such a basic website in quotation you know. And now let's take a second example and this will be a standard dashboard. Let's just take for example the Vercel dashboard or you know any bank will have a dashboard. So just a standard dashboard which is very dynamic, has very minimal caching as you know it. And you know in such an example I would probably choose Remix. And you know what? When you create such a big actual project, such a dynamic application, I want to have a fast dev server. I don't have that with Next.js right now. It will change in the future, I'm quite sure. But right now, Vite is 10 times faster and I will choose Remix for that. Of course, that's not all. I mean, let's be honest, a dev server is such a minimal point. It does not really make the difference, but there's still a lot of other stuff. So first of all, let's again come to caching again. Caching is great when you have content-driven websites. When you create dashboards which are highly dynamic, 
it can be quite complicated with Next.js. Caching in Next.js is still not 100% figured out. Caching still has some bugs, some stuff you don't really understand, and it just not really makes your life easy when you try to create dynamic websites. Also, for example, errors. Errors are still in thing which got 10 times better, but they still aren't perfect. I still have errors where I really don't understand what they mean. I just get some webpack, la 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 la. I look at myself, I have no clue, and they just happen, and you have to live with that. And again, they got better, but they aren't perfect. So in general, again, there's no better or worse. Nevertheless, I personally lean to Next.js when I talk about content-driven websites, and when I talk about very, very actual um, dynamic websites, I prefer Remix. Nevertheless, both create, at the end of the day, good websites. You can use Next.js to create dynamic websites. It will work. You can create, you can use Remix to create content-driven website. It also works. Both, at the end of the day, create the same product, the same end result. So you can actually create the same result with both actual frameworks. Still, I would say with one, it will be easier than with the other one. Nevertheless, both will do the same job and will do a good job. So now friends, I hope you could learn something. I hope you could learn something about Next.js or Remix, the pros, the cons, and what you probably should choose. And now I hope you also liked this video, you subscribed, and I hope I will see you in the next video. So now enjoy your day and bye.